So, in my childhood, I played many, 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 many video games. But there was one that really struck a chord in my being. Mario. So this isn't the first time that I've used Unity. I watched some 3D, uh, 3D game videos teaching you how to make like a cube game that races. It's this Brad Keys tutorial, you might have seen it. And uh, after that I started messing around with uh, my own 3D game. But I didn't get very far, so I would say that I need to start from scratch and learn the basics because I forgot most things, you know. Uh, one thing that really attracts me to game dev is the fact that you have this world that you can create. For me, I like doing everything myself. We'll see how that goes, you know, maybe it'll be too overwhelming and I'll need some to get some assets, but I like drawing. Um, but yeah, I love how like you program the physics. You program the movements, that is physics. You make the music behind. You experiment with sound effects. You draw everything. You animate. To me, that's like ultimate freedom. And that's one reason I love programming, because I can create my own world. As I go through this journey, I am going to discuss like where I'm stumbling, you know, what things I don't understand. And then I'll try to teach, you know, what I learned. So this is really like a learning process and you can see like the hardships I go through. Yeah, I'm making this video mostly to document, to, like see my progress and hopefully it can inspire you to get into game dev if you're thinking about it and you want it, but you're kind of worried about what it takes. And you know, if you're into that kind of thing, follow along. I'm on a mission. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I just hope I have the strength to pull through. So, first things first, I need to start from scratch and learn Unity. And the way I normally learn a new skill is by watching a YouTube series. Um, if I'm really desperate and there's nothing very valuable on YouTube, I'll head to Udemy. But in this case, uh, there was a nice series by Let's Make a Game Together. I like this tutorial because, first of all, it's short, it's like 11 episodes. And secondly, he doesn't optimize the game so much. I don't even think he really finished the series, but in my case, it's good because I just want something to get my feet off the ground quickly, you know, get the basic mechanics in. And I'm gonna rewrite all the code because it's not really optimized. It's very clunky, you know. But as of now, it was the perfect solution. So I wanna make a big shout out to Let's Make a Game Together. Thank you for the help, dude. So I managed to get some basic character mechanics out of the way, like walking, jumping, simple box with a box collider, um, and also dying. So wrapping it up for the first day, it's Monday. So far this is my progress. I just finished programming the animations and I think it looks amazing. Yeah, I know that's that wasn't supposed to happen. I will fix that later, definitely. <laughs> so I have coins. I have these enemies. You can jump on their heads and kill them. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> and yeah, there's the end point. Uh, I hope to see you soon where this game looks much better and this question mark doesn't fly into Mars when I hit it. Hello everybody. Um, back with you the next day, March 19th. Um, as you can see, I've made some progress with the... Uh, the whole drawing of it. So I've added, first of all, the background. You can't really tell as of now, but there's a sort of parallax effect because each component is... Uh, so basically, like, the clouds are further out. I could show you like this.
There we go, getting progress. So yeah, the bushes are here, some are further out, some are closer in. Um, this is the background, and that's a way of sort of achieving this parallax, which you can barely see because I haven't put too much time into it. Um, also, I've utilized the tile map. So basically, I have this one box and I ha I created it. Um, I put how much pixels it is. And you see you have this palette here. And let me go back to 2D mode. So it's really awesome. Um, I've been dying to learn how to do this. Uh, you get your brush. And since I only have this in my tile map, you could put more. You could just paint them in. And yeah, it's super easy. And finally, it's starting to feel like Mario. Uh, and on this tile map here, you have to put a tile map collider 2D. Um, when I first did it, I just put a normal box collider, I think, and it didn't work. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so yeah, I'm really satisfied with how it's coming out. I'm not sure why he's getting trapped here. So yeah, there's a bunch of little bugs. I also want to fix this timer, maybe add a font so that it looks like the OG Mario. But, but anyways, I'm really, really happy. So week one game dev, stick with me and let's see how we progress together. Hello everybody, back with you for another update on my Mario game. So as you can see, I've changed the score. Um, I used a Super Mario Bros. 3 font that I found online. So it's being rendered dynamically, except for the lives here. I just statically put it. Um, I've also added some sound effects and music, so let's listen to it. just searched online for Mario sounds in the music so we can mute the sound for now um, and as you can see here I also added an animation to the question mark box um, I am using a new sprite drawing library um, it's called as Asaprite <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it but it's really nice so here you have your layers so I have like my box layer and my coin layer. And here are the animation. So it shows how it looks. Um, so here's how it goes. It just, the box goes up and the coin flips around. Um, I got, I did the flipping effect basically by making, okay, I should fix that, but anyways, making the coin skinnier and then fatter. And I'm really proud with how that looks. Um, I might fix it um, in the future, make it go higher, maybe make it look a bit better. It was my first time using it and honestly it saved a lot of time. It's a really nice um, little application. I had a problem with my character getting stuck in the floor and also my enemy was getting stuck. So I, I used to have a box collider 2D on my main character but um, the problem was, I thought it was the animation, but actually it was the friction under the character. So let me see, if I click on my character, you can see now it's the collider is like this. So basically like what this collider is, is if an enemy hits outside of this green line, it doesn't register it, but here. So you can see it's actually not my whole character, but it doesn't matter. So, um... Here, this is more efficient because when you have a square, you have like a lot of points of friction, but when it's a parabola, I guess, there's only like one point that it's touching the the ground. So it makes it a lot more efficient, just easier. It doesn't get stuck. Um, so yeah, that was something really annoying. Also, side note, the code for this is all on GitHub, so if you're interested in that, you can go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description. So yeah. So alrighty, guys, that's the end for this week. Um, I'm sorry I didn't go over a lot of my code 
but honestly, I don't feel like it's optimized enough to even show it. So I want to work more on the code next week and less on the animations and stuff. So, so if you have some suggestions, things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comment section. So, yep, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.